Hey readers, happy Monday, happy May. Did you know May is National Bike Month? Throughout this month, you're going to see a few books that are about bicycling. Today, my first choice is Tilly the Terrible Swede. This is a cool book because Tilly is one of the first female racers. This book also has a great message of how all people should have equal rights. Happy reading, happy riding, enjoy. Tilly the Terrible Swede, How One Woman, a Sewing Needle, and a Bicycle Changed History, written by Sue Stoffaker. In the old days, most girls came to America with a dream, but all Tilly Anderson had was a needle. So she got herself a job in a tailor shop and waited for a dream to come and find her. One fine day, it rolled right by her window. Bicycles aren't for ladies, Tilly's mother reminded her, but Tilly wasn't listening. From that day on, she saved up her money and dreamed of nothing but riding. Not the slow and stately sort of riding. No, Tilly dreamed of the speedy, scorchy, racy kind of riding. If Tilly insisted on a bicycle, her mother suggested that she ride like the other young ladies did, making slow, graceful figure eights. Or completing circles around a maypole. Above all, Tilly was not to be seen with a bicycle face. But Tilly had other ideas. I'm too weak to ride for long, she thought. So every day after work, she pedaled for half an hour in the fresh air, lifted dumbbells, and swung clubs over her head. There was just one other problem. Tilly had found that riding in dresses and skirts meant spilling, not speeding, falling, not flying. So, Tilly used her noodle and her needle to make something entirely different from what was sold in the lady's shop where she worked. When Tilly took off her coat for her next ride, her mother was horrified. The neighbors were scandalized. Tilly's friends were mortified. In fact, some of them stopped speaking to her. But Tilly was satisfied. They all think I'm wicked, Tilly told her new friend, a bicycle racer named Philip Schuberg. Now you can enter a real race, Philip said. Some women do, you know. So Tilly entered her first century race. That's 100 miles. and broke the women's record by 18 minutes.
However, the real racing excitement happened on the velodrome. For six days, women raced an hour and a half in the afternoon and an hour and a half in the evening, riding shoulder to shoulder with the other racers with no protective gear or helmet. The woman who could stay on her bike and ride the farthest claimed the prize money. Now that's a competition, Tilly told Philip. At first, she had a little trouble staying upright on the tilted track, but once she got the hang of it, Tilly blew by all the other riders and set another new record. In no time at all, Tilly was a whirling sensation. Poets wrote odes, reporters begged her for interviews, bicycle companies fought to get Tilly as their poster girl. When Tilly rides her wheel, a whiz, a whir, a dazzling blur, a flash of yellow hair, a firm set face, a whirlwind pace, a wheel that splits the air. To slow her eyes, so fast she flies around the tilted curve with wheel a cant at dizzy slant to catch her souping swerve. Indianapolis Trade Journal, March 26th, 1898. Tilly rides around them. The other riders weren't too keen on Tilly getting all the press. At a six day race in Minneapolis, they decided to stop Tilly on the track. They bumped her bicycle. They punctured her tires. Tilly tried to race on, but after the second day of pushing and punctures, she withdrew from the race while she could still stand. Would this be the end of Tilly's lightning fast career? Not if Philip could help it. Philip had quit his racing career to become Tilly's manager. He paced her on rides. He cheered her on. He counted her push-ups. Back in Chicago, Philip encouraged Tilly to enter an even more difficult 18 hour race around and around the track, three hours a day for six days at dizzying speeds. Even though everyone knew she was the fastest racer, the organizers put Tilly in a racing group with the slowest cyclists. Philip was terribly upset how would Tilly know how fast she needed to go to get a qualifying time? How would she pace herself? I'll just have to race against myself, Tilly told him. I'm pretty fast. By the end of the day, she was a mile ahead of the fastest racer in the fast heat. It seemed nothing could hold Tilly back. She won the race, set a new 18 hour record and earned herself a nickname along with the prize money. Tilly, the terrible Swede. Young girls on their bicycles thought Tilly was terrific, but not everyone did. The men in the associated cycling clubs thought a woman racer was, well, unwomanly. Too manlike, and that is a great sin, they concluded. A team of doctors 
asked to examine Tilly to see what the effects of strenuous exercise would be on a woman's body. Their results were published in the newspaper. Although Miss Anderson's limbs are not as regular from an artistic point of view, her general health is better, the doctors reported. Simply put, from head to foot, she is a mass of muscle. To prove it, they put a picture of Tilly's bare leg in the newspaper. Her mother was horrified. She fainted. Her friends were mortified, even the ones still talking to her. But the ladies calling for women's rights were energized. Tilly, 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 Tilly. Let me tell you what I think of bicycling, said Susan B. Anthony. It has done more to emancipate women than anything else in the world. It gives a woman a feeling of freedom and self-reliance. I stand by and rejoice every time I see a woman ride by on a wheel. Philip knew Tilly was a mass of muscle, but he didn't have the same opinion that the doctors did. He thought Tilly was a work of art Maybe we should marry and make our partnership official, he suggested to Tilly. Tilly thought it was a fine idea. And so, between races, that is just what they did. Tilly raced on all through the 1890s, breaking her own records and becoming the undisputed women's bicycle racing champion of the world. But by the turn of the century, bicycle racing had given way to a whole new American pastime. Talk about speed. Tilly couldn't get enough of her new hobby driving a motor car. It's no child's play to run a motor car. No license should be granted to anyone under 18 and never a woman. Thanks, Tilly, for paving the way. <laughs>